Well, good morning, everybody. So this weekend we headed out to feed the goats in the morning and um, Miss Midge was very happy to see us. Everybody was hungry and ready to get their breakfast. I feed my goats alfalfa pellets and goat chow in the morning as a little treat um, and then they're on pasture. Here they are so excited. They see me as soon as I walk out the back door and they know it's breakfast time so they get very excited. I feed these animals in three pans um, three pans uh, because they I have three mamas and three sets of babies and they tend to gravitate to eat out of each pan with the mom and the baby. And I feed them out of three because they tend to headbutt each other. So I'm just getting them all fed here and they have to run and check out everybody else's pan before they all get settled in their own pan. This is Gladys and she has a set of twins and her babies are named uh, Opal and Viola. And uh, Miss Opal was right next to her, looks a ex- spitting image of her mother. And then um, Viola's kind of back in the corner. She's a brown Nigerian dwarf goat. So here she comes out. She has to check and see what's going on with everybody else. This is Miss Midge and Mabel. And then we have Rose and Lily. And those are our female goats. I do not milk these goats. They are purely here because I love them and they're my pets. I do not have any dogs. Um, My son has one dog and uh, the goats are my pets. These are my boys. Um, This is Stan Lee and Jake. And I feed, they're in the pen separate from the girls and I feed them uh, separately. So they're getting their breakfast here too. Okay, I'm gonna head over here to the chicken coop um, and feed the chickens. I give them layer crumbles and a mix of corn. The corn we get in uh, 2,000 pound totes, so I just um, cut the layer crumbles to uh, make my feed go a little bit further for the chickens. They also get a lot of weeds and a lot of scraps, and we tend to um, pour our mowed grass in here too so they can, they can get all the bugs out of it. Uh, Here I'm feeding the chickens, but I'm keeping my eye on our rooster. Uh, He likes to attack you if you turn your back to him. So I always try to keep facing him no matter how I go into the coop. And usually I take the bucket just in case I have to fight back. But um, hopefully we'll have some chicks here soon and he will have done his job. Otherwise he might not be staying with us very long. I'm just gonna pop in here real quick and check for eggs. Everything else I'm just leaving and letting the chickens sit on. Hopefully we'll have some chicks, but um, none so far. I'm gonna head out to the garden here. Um, As you can see, as we walk out here, um, to your left here is our melon patch. In here we have watermelon, honeydew, and cantaloupe. And we have quite a few fruit set that are that are rather good size. So I think um, here in the next probably three or four weeks, I'll have to go back and look exactly when I planted these, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut the water to them because if you cut the water to your melons a few weeks, about, I don't know, two weeks, 10 days, two weeks before you're getting ready to harvest them, they tend to be a lot sweeter. So eventually here in the next week or two we will cut this water back so we are ready for um, a harvest of fruit but they are doing quite well there is some of them that are just really small i have a couple couple vines that only have like one one fruit on this is a nectarine tree that i planted last year that's doing doing good but it only has one nectarine one So our other mini orchard out by the road has, I have a nectarine tree out there and it has quite a few more, but um, one is good. You know, you don't want to leave too much fruit on them for the first year. 
these two trees right here, these are two cherry trees that I planted earlier this year. And, you know, they're just making their way in the world. <laughs> so uh, they're doing okay. I did plant another apple tree at the same time and it actually ended up dying. So um, never really got any leaves on it. Okay, we're gonna head over here into the garden. And the first thing we're gonna do is I wanna stake up uh, some of my pepper plants. But before I do that, I'm gonna go over here and I need to turn on my irrigation water. So we run off irrigation here. Um, we pay an, an irrigation assessment for our, our plot where our house is and we pay an irrigation assessment for our farm too. So um, we have irrigation water, which is nice because we don't use domestic water. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on my soaker hoses so here I'm just turning on our irrigation. We have three sets. We have an east section, which is half the garden, a west section, which is half the garden, and the melons, which are part of the garden. This right here is our filter. We get a lot of sand in our irrigation water, so this filters it out and then it back flushes itself. Over here, we're gonna go ahead and look at our zucchini plants. This is one of the chores for today. We gotta get these all cleaned up, get all these leaves that have damage on them. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and clean off these leaves and uh, trim them back and then get rid of as many eggs as possible from the squash bugs. And then any squash bugs that I see, obviously, I will either take the chickens or squish. All right, we're gonna head back over here to our peppers. Um, so we had a bad windstorm and a lot of my peppers are leaning and what I need to do today is get them staked up. So hopefully these steaks I bought work, but unfortunately I'm a little concerned that they might be a little small. So here I'm just looking at my pepper plants and, and you know, assessing my damage that I have. As we get over here, this is our other pepper bed. This is the one that needs the most work and they are leaning over considerably. And so we're gonna go ahead and get these staked up right now because um, I should have done it quite some time ago. The stakes that I ended up purchasing from Amazon, I purchased stakes that were 18 inches and I'm afraid that these stakes are not going to be oh here I just broke that limb off pulling on it so darn it the stakes that I purchased like I said uh, are only 18 inches and I f soon find out here that these just are not tall enough to hold these pepper plants unfortunately but I'm gonna go ahead and use them because they're what I have and I need to get these staked up. So hopefully they help. So here I'm just getting ready to stake these pepper plants and get going on it. Okay, so here I'm gonna just clean up this zucchini plant and see if I can get a little more life out of it. Um, squash bugs tend to get the best of my 
squash plants. So I actually have started some more uh, squash seeds inside and I will be transferring those outside probably this week um, on the other side of the garden in hopes that I get another second harvest of zucchini. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and clean these up really well and I will come back and show you what they look like when I'm finished. zucchini cleaned up really well and hopefully we'll get a second run at it here we're gonna head over to the other side of the garden and we're going to uh, pick some cucumbers so that we can get a good harvest enough to maybe do a batch of pickles so I've got um, these are muncher cucumbers these are my favorite cucumbers to use for pickles um, because they do really good in pickles and in fresh eating We got a nice little basket of cucumbers, some for fresh eating, some for pickles. So this will make at least three or four jars of pickles. I got distracted here. I'm gonna take you over by our trumpet vine. I had I seen a bunch of hummingbirds over here, but as soon as I get over here to the trumpet vine, they're nowhere to be found. I must have scared them off. But I am gonna get in here really close because I wanna show you how many pollinators we have on this trumpet vine that ent that is the entry for the garden. It is just swarming with bees. We're gonna get over here and get back to the task at hand and I'm gonna get these beans picked. These are jade bush green beans and we started these from seed that we had saved several years ago. Um, I have since used up all the seeds this year and so we will need to save seed at the end of this year so we have bean seeds for next year. Here's all the beans we got from that bed. And then I did get distracted by the tomatillo plant behind me. So I picked the ripe tomatillos as well and we'll have some green salsa later this week. My one single egg that was not under a hen. So I threw that in the basket and emptied out that bowl. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just going to collect all the cherry tomatoes and saladette tomatoes that are ripe. We have quite a few different um, cherry tomatoes around the garden and I've kind of tried to stagger them a little bit this year. I'm not sure if this is a good plan, but um, it's my first year trying this. I usually just plant them in a, in a large row and they tend to overtake everything and I'm not able to get really a good harvest. So I was hoping by separating some of the plants that I would be able to get a better harvest this year and, and really get in there and um, collect all the ch ripe cherry tomatoes at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing here.
this little cherry tomato plant or big cherry tomato plant uh, blew over in the wind and our tomato cage didn't hold it. So I'm going to have to have Jamie come out and help me uh, drive a T-post in and then I'm going to have to stake it back up. We're going to walk back over here and check this backside of this cherry tomato plant because I can't see it all from standing in the front. I end up getting a few out of here, I think. Way deep down in the middle, there's some red ones. Okay, we made it to our last cherry tomato plant on the far side of the garden. This guy's kind of all on its own, but um, we're gonna come in here and he has some nice orange cherry tomato plants on him. Uh, we're gonna clean him up and um, take this harvest in the house. As we finish up in the garden here, we're gonna walk back to where our harvest is at. And I just wanna show you here, our Roma tomatoes are looking pretty good. We have quite a few tomatoes on, a lot of green ones, but um, these, are, these determinate tomatoes uh, will set all their fruit at once and get ripe all at once. So they really make a nice tomato for canning salsa or tomato products, tomato sauce, tomato paste, things like that. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I hope you enjoyed the garden as much as I did.